Hey Dart family, how you doing? Uh, we are on the Dart language tour, annotating the docs. Uh, we're in the classes section today about using constructors. Uh, the last section was on using class members, which was uh, how to use like your variables uh, and your methods, which are functions inside of a class. Uh, constructors are a special type of function or method inside of a class and um, yeah and, and, and the, the purpose is to define the manner in which you instantiate uh, an instance of a class okay um, yeah, and so this is all about using constructors. So you, you'll notice in this classes section, we're not actually using the class keyword. We're extending classes. It's all about using it. So they give us these examples here um, where uh, these, these classes have already been defined because they're from the Dart math library, uh, for example. This one is. Okay. Um, I, I can remember whenever I started programming, I didn't really understand the, the meaning or the purpose behind an initializer or a constructor. Um, but just know that they are a special type of method uh, for the sole purpose of constructing or initializing the object. Um, it's almost like an entry point to the object itself. You might think of it that way as well. Okay. Um, in the Ruby language, we have this method called initialize that we have to create in a class. Um, we don't get the the um, the constructor for free, as it were, um, like you can in Dart if you don't declare. An initializer, um, but Dart doesn't have its own kind of um, special keyword like initialize or anything like that. You just use the class name um, with a sort of signature uh, that we'll show you here in a little bit. Okay. Okay. So constructor names can be either class name or class name dot identifier. So there are two ways, um, sorry, not two ways. There's, there's kind of like two ways. You can have the class name, which takes, you know, positional or keyword named style arguments, uh, or you can have this, this identifier type. Um, you can have multiple identifiers. I, I don't know, maybe you can have more than one um, initializer like this, I'm not sure. But um, yeah, there, there's, there's two ways. And that way, this, this is sort of like a named constructor, okay? Um, and, and we'll show that in depth as well. Okay, so it says, for, for example, the following code creates point objects using point and point dot from JSON constructors. So let's throw this into Dartpad and take a look, shall we? So I have the Dart math library already imported uh, because this is where point comes from. I googled Dart math library and then I clicked on point. And you can see it has this section called constructors. It has a section called properties and methods. Remember these are the members of a class. Um, okay, so there's our properties, here's our methods. Uh, this constructor, all it has is this one called point. Okay, this is like this first one, which is just a class name. This from JSON is an identifier, but um, this is one of the problems I have with documentation sometimes. You go to play around with something like this and you run into an error because this from JSON, this isn't actually defined anywhere. Um, in the point class, okay. The point class does not have a from JSON uh, named constructor. <laughs> or, 
identifier constructor. Is that what we're going to call it? An identifier constructor. Okay. So that is no bueno. Um, however, yeah, and even here you can see uh, this is GitHub. Um, this is the class code itself. Here is the constructor. Okay, we know it's a constructor because it's like a. It kind of looks like a function, um, and we're just using the name of the class itself. Okay. Um, ba -ba -ba -bum. Inside Flutter, there is a material app class. You should be very familiar with this. This is the default uh, class that's kind of one of the top level widgets. Um, in in our app, and usually um, you just use the material app class. You uh, instantiate it and give it like a home route um, or a home key with a certain um, another widget to um, as as the value for home. But uh, another thing you can do is this thing called router. Okay. Let me scroll down. I actually don't want to click on that because I want to look at it in here. There's this constructor section, okay? And here are the two constructors. You can have a material app like this, and it takes all these, you know, key value pairs. Or you can say material app dot router. Uh, and this is a different type of constructor. It uses the router instead of a navigator. Um, I think Flutterfolio uses this um, convention, okay? So if you want to use that, that's, that's how you do that. Um, so anyways, that's, that's an example of um, a class having two types of constructors. Okay, so with that being said, um, yeah, that first example is kind of kaput. All right. Let's keep going. The following code has the same effect, but uses the optional new keyword before the constructor name. Okay, so there's this. Uh, I think it's what they're doing here is, yeah, they're just putting a new in front. And we've seen that before. Um, we've seen that you can use this optional new keyword, uh, but we, you'll get this warning that says unnecessary new keyword. Um, I've seen places in it and I've showed in other videos where it can be beneficial to have new because uh, it can change um, the error message that you get. I forget which one that is. It's one of them. But um, yeah, it, it made the error message more helpful. So um, older code, you will still see this in there. Older developers that don't want to learn the new way of doing things will probably still use this. Uh, but just know it's optional. Um, and you probably won't be using it going forward. Um, yeah. Okay. Um, yeah. I guess I should talk about, so like, you know, this from JSON, like this, this could be a, a real uh, identifying constructor um, or a constructor with this identifier. This could be defined in the point class. And you could imagine, like, in your own code, putting in these points, X and Y, like, we understand, you know, if you've had basic geometry, that a point consists of an X and Y value. Um, if you're doing it from JSON, though, it's not guaranteed that X will be first and that Y will be second when the value comes in. So you need a key value pair in JSON. Okay. Um, so the constructor would be written in such a way that it would take sort of this, this hash map uh, style argument um, and be able to parse the data from there. Okay, so that's kind of the point of, of doing that. All right, some classes provide constant constructors. To create a compile time constant using a constant constructor, put the const keyword before the constructor name. Okay, another example in the docs that I don't particularly like, because if you want to play around with it, there is no such thing as an immutable point. And if you're new 
to Dart like I am, you can't even extend point easily to make one because it gives you this thing about like, hey, you need to declare a constructor or give it a zero argument constructor and that's just too much work at this point. Okay, so instead of having a mutable point, we're just gonna use the point uh, class itself and just know that it's immutable because we have this keyword const, okay? Um, and we're also able to do that, I think, right? It said some classes provide constant constructors. Uh, looking back at our code for point, this constructor happens to be a const constructor. If you give it an X and a Y, the point is not gonna change. Okay, so it can be a constant at compile time. It makes a lot of sense. <clears throat> All right, constructing two identical compile time constants results in a single canonical instance. Off the top of my head, I don't know what canonical means. Um, I'd have to Google it. Why don't we do that? According to or ordered by canon law, that's also not helpful. Included in the list of, no, that's also not. Uh, the prescribed official dress of the clergy. Let's go with that one. <laughs> Constructing two identical compile time constants result, results in a single canonical instance. Let's just say it's the same thing, okay? So that even if we declare A to be a const of immutable point with you know these X and Y values, declaring it again on the right side and assigning it to B, like somewhere in memory, these two things are gonna to point to the same basic object, okay? Um, yeah. Well, let's show that. Oops. Okay, so that was like, hey, we can use const. Um, again, we're not gonna have an immutable point, we're just gonna have a point. Um, and instead of asserting, we can print in DARPAD and it prints true because we're declaring like are these identical a and b they are yay um, if you get rid of the const okay now this is a point in memory and even though this is the same definition we've declared it at a different point and assigned it to b so now we have like these two uh, pieces of memory that have kind of the same representation they're both a point of uh, x equals one and y equals one but they weren't declared at compile time, so they couldn't be a compile time constant. Okay, so they're just like these runtime variables A and B. Uh, if we compare them, are they identical A and B? If we print it now, we should get false, okay? Um, even if one is a const and the other is not, we should still get con uh, false. Uh, only when they are both constants um, will they be true. Okay, and that doesn't matter. Like I could say var c equals the same const point one one, um, and so forth and so on. And every variable that references that const point um, will be identical to each other. Okay, and actually, while I'm here, this is a pretty big section using constructors. Um, what I just showed you is the very last point in this thing <laughs> where um, one of them is not a constant. So it says if a constant constructor is outside of a constant context and is invoked without const, it creates a non-constant object. Okay, so it's outside of a constant context and we're gonna show you that in a little bit. Um, meaning it's not, it can't be inferred that it's constant um, or sort of um, coerced into being a constant. Um, right, okay, so that's kind of what I just showed there. So we really have the, uh, these two other parts to go over. Uh, this next part talks about a um, a constant context it says within a constant context 
You can omit the const before a constructor or literal. For example, look at the code which creates a con which creates a const map. You can omit the const before a constructor or literal. Okay, I'm gonna comment this out and format. All right. So we have this variable called point and line. It's supposed to be a constant. Um, and on the right side, we're saying that this hash map, um, yeah, a map, we call them maps in Dart. This map is a constant. And they're saying like, because we've declared a const in a lot of places, but most importantly here, if this um, object is capable of being a const, um, right? So we're using this constructor method, the way this is written, um, that just having const on there will do all this stuff. And in fact, let me get rid of immutable point. All right, so you see all these warnings are the same, avoid const keyword. Um, that's referring to these right here, all these that are underlined. Okay, later it says, hey, it's not being used. So if we really wanted to, we could print point and line. Um, right. And then so the next part of the documentation says, you can omit all but the first use of the const keyword. Okay, so there's only one const which establishes the constant context. It's this one. Okay, man, my eyes. All right, so basically we can get rid of that, we can get rid of that, all these const keywords. So previously we had a const map on the right side, we had a const list, we had a const point, a const list, and two const points. All right, now I'm gonna format it. But because I've said const point and line, okay, um, all, those, all those warnings go away. Uh, but I do want to show you one thing. Let me put all of these back and let me create a second variable and just show you. Because I showed you with these two points when we used const uh, for A and B and we did the identical comparison. Let's call this um, line and point. Why not? Um, so this top one has all the consts. This bottom one only has the one declared. Uh, we're saying that we think these should be the same object, right? So let's print identical. It'll return true or false. Okay, it returns true. So all the const on the right side of the equal sign are completely redundant and we could get rid of them. Um, however, if I declare this as a variable, or a map, <clears throat> okay, and remember we can say, oh, we want a string key and we want a list um, value. Those are not gonna be the same, <laughs> okay? Um, because even though I've declared the type, that's really just like var. Declaring the type just helps it uh, ahead of time know what it is for analysis purposes. Okay, so that's really just what I wanted to show there. Right, 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 right. Okay, um, that is the extent of using constructors. Again, if you're a Flutter developer, um, you're probably using Material App. Uh, maybe you've, you've used Material App dot router. Um, right. Yep. Okay. Uh, you can use the new keyword, but it's uh, antiquated, I guess. So nobody really uses it uh, nowadays. You'll get a linter warning when you do use it. Um, beware that point does not actually have a from JSON 
constructor on it. It's sort of a contrived example here. Um, even if something has a const constructor defined in it, uh, you don't have to use it to um, to instantiate the object. Um, and, and like down here, if you just put the const on the left side, you don't have to declare const on the right side anywhere. But I wonder, now that we're looking at this, what if this is var? But because I have a const here, is that going to be the same as this const? Let's, let's see. Yes. So when it runs, whether it compiles or not as a constant, for example, I could get rid of... I don't... I think this will change things though, won't it? Yeah. So now this is not a const map because I got rid of that. So let me bring that back. What if I got rid of that? Yeah. So there's sort of like a um, an order of operations almost, it seems like. Because what I'm trying to show is that, so even if I declare this point and line as a variable, okay, it's not a const, it's not, I'm not declaring the type, the return type. Simply by putting const on the right side in front of this map identifier, okay, these curly braces, um, I've declared that this is a const. And even if I haven't put it on the right side, if on the left side down here I put this as a const, I'm saying that this whole wrapping thing makes everything a const. And of course these, these dudes have to have the same values. Uh, but now these should be equal again. And when I say equal, I mean identical. Okay. I kind of want to see where that comes from. It comes from the dark core library. Um, yes, but where? Where, my friends? It's a function. Check whether to identity hash code print. Hmm. So we get identical right next to where we get print. That's kind of cool. Huh. Nice. Okay. Yeah, that is all I wanted to show about using constructors. Uh, next time we'll be getting into getting an object's type. All right, see you then.